Hey guys, welcome to our tutorial on importing character models into iClone. Uh, in this tutorial, what we're going to cover is we're going to import an external model in a FBX format. We're going to be importing this guy here, this uh, character from Vertigo Games, uh, into 3D Exchange, and then we're going to be mapping his bones and giving him limited facial uh, motion and bringing him into iClone. Uh, so again, this, this character, uh, fully animatable for the body, we're not going to do much about facial animation in this tutorial. Uh, you can get this guy from Vertigo Games, and the rifle or the shotgun there is from uh, Warlord. And this scene you see around you is from Decksoft, and it's also embedded in our iClone 6 uh, projects. I just wanted to start off with that because it kind of looked cool. So first of all, we need to go to our uh, desktop here and find our FBX model. It's not, uh, model msniper.fbx. Let's just click and drag this and go into 3D Exchange. There we go. I'm going to drop that in. And we can just press OK. And our character is going to load up in a nice T-pose. And it'll say you can access the FBX embedded texture files at the source path for further resizing, yada, yada. So let's go to our desktop and we can see we have that model M sniper dot FBM. Uh, this is the folder and you can see all of the uh, texture files right here. So we don't need to worry about that too much because we're going to be embedding them, uh, embedding them into our iClone character. So let's go back into uh, 3D Exchange here again. And the first thing you need to do with any other character to bring them into iClone is go to your character section on the right and convert to non-standard. And here we have our character. We need to do some bone mapping on the character. I'll just increase the bone size here so we can see a little bit better. We need to map all these bones. Now if you have a uh, custom character that's not uh, that doesn't have a preset like uh, Maya or Max, any of these presets you see up here, 3ds Max, Biped, Daz Genesis, Maya Human IK, if you don't have one of those, you'll need to map your character's bones manually. So to do that, you can just start by uh, you know clicking on the left foot, for example, um, click on the left foot on your character, and then on the reference image, and you know the left uh, shin and the and the thigh and everything like that. So you'll have to do that one by one, including the uh, the hands and everything like that. But fortunately, I know this character is created using a Maya Human IK rig. So I'm just going to clear this and I'm going to select my preset and one click mapping with Maya Human IK and everything's ready to go. I can test this out by going to the active checkbox, uh, checkbox and going for my T pose to something like a basic run there. And you can preview that. You can see our characters running. His feet may seem a little bit far apart though, so we can adjust that in a sec. You can also test that with, uh, you know, other clab, uh, calibration movements. And he's doing some little fitness exercises, getting uh, you know, limbered up and everything. Uh, but I'll go back to my T-pose then, and let's go ahead and try and fix this T-pose. To do that, we need to go up here to the Properties section. And the legs, we need to bring them a little bit closer together. So to do that, we can go to the Feet Offset Spacing. We can manually bring those together, or we can just select the Auto Checkbox, like I like to do because I'm lazy. And that'll normally be pretty good. It'll space them fairly decently. In most cases, if not, you can just have, you'll just have to do it uh, manually. And from there, we can go to the hip offset. So if I go to the 90 degree angle of my character here, you can see he has fairly good posture. Um, but if your character is leaning forward one way or another, if there's some sort of hip offset stuff going on, you can adjust it here. So for example, if I uh, put this to zero, you can see our character is a little off balance, almost like he's falling backwards. So generally, we want to put it at uh, you know negative 15. Again, it really depends on your specific character. In addition to that, you can modify the position of each individual bone as well. I think this guy's okay the way he is, but if I wanted to say, for example, bring his head up a little bit, I can deselect this active checkbox, select his uh, neck bone there, use the e-hockey to rotate, and I can bring it up like this. So I can bring it so he's looking more forward like that. Um, but I don't like that. I think our character looks better with his mysterious hood and his face kind of, you know, facing down a little bit. So I'll use the control Z hotkey there and undo that. And you can see we have him. I like him just the way he is. And then we can also uh, take a look at the uh, feet and foot contact or feet and hand contact rather. So if we select this and I go down to uh, my character's feet, if you select active, you can see he has those um, kind of turquoise aqua indicators. And that shows where the uh, contact plane is. And I think that looks fine right there. If we go up to his hand, you can see his hand is fairly okay, but it may be a little bit far away from his actual hand. So you can select uh, one of these boxes right here and bring it up and something like that. And that's going to bring it up on both sides as well. It's going to mirror that. So there you go. It really depends on your character. That might go through his sleeve a little bit. 
but if you want hand contact, you can uh, go and do that. And finally, we're going to map his eye bones and his jaw bones. Like I mentioned, we're going to have some very simplistic uh, facial animation for this character. So let's take a look at his face, which is covered by green bones right now. So let's decrease the bone size to about one so we can see his beautiful blue eyes. And let's go over here to face extend mapping. And what I need to do here, I can select um, his jaw from the hierarchy over here. So if I go down here, it should be under his neck. Right there, there we go. Select the jaw. And then I can select map to jaw. Make sure you have the active checkbox on, otherwise you won't be able to do this. And I can also select the left eye and go over and map to left eye right here. And map to right eye. Uh, right eye is right here. And map to the right eye. If your characters have tails or anything like that, you can map to them to extended bones and stuff like that. But uh, that topic will be covered in a separate tutorial. So that's pretty much it for uh, mapping the character. We have jaw mapped and we have all of our characters' uh, body bones mapped, which means he's able to be animated by any of iClone's motion tools. So that's pretty much it. Let's just go ahead and convert him. And now our character is ready to go. There's one, mo uh, one more thing I wanted to get to first. If we look at closely on the character, you can see... Oh, if you look at his uh, hood, you can see his hood's um, you know, solid from this end, but we can see through it on this end. And either that's magic or we need to fix some sort of material issue right here. Uh, now to do that, I'm going to select his hood right there and go down to materials. You can see we have the matte uh, sniper net uh, selected right here. And all I need to do is go down and press this, uh, click this two-sided option and that'll cover it up. So the material will be on both sides. So we're good to go. Now let's do one more thing. Let's do the uh, basic face bone mapping. And to do that, let's zoom in on his face. We need to go into the expression editor, which is a little bit further up here. There we go, our expression editor. And just click that. And here you have the option to set the uh, head orientation. This is automatically done when you do the bone mapping for your character. So rightward, tilt right, tilt left. You can also modify the eyes. So in this case here, I'm going to select the uh, left eye right here, and you can see that bone uh, selects. Now I'm going to rotate that. If I press the W hotkey and use the movement gizmo, it'll kind of move like that, and which is kind of freaky. We probably don't want to do that unless we have some sort of horror movie going on. So uh, rightward uh, for the left eye, we can use the E hotkey and use the rotation gizmo instead. Rotate that rightward. That looks a bit better. And make sure you have this auto uh, auto apply selected as well. Otherwise, you'll have to select the set button after every movement to keep it. So let's go left eye leftward. I'm going to do this really quick here. Left eye downward. Left eye upward. And then do the same thing for the right eye. So right eye rightward. And ooh, leftward right there. And downward. And upward. There we go. Okay, so then you can select, uh, you know, both of them right here, uh, rightward, leftward. They're pretty even. Maybe he's a, a little bit of a lazy eye, but that's okay. Normally, you'd want to measure out the uh, rotate values here. Um, but we can go to the jaw as well. Like I mentioned, we have drop jaw. We can select that and just rotate our jaw slightly downward like that. He looks really shocked there. And we can go leftward with his jaw slightly leftward and slightly rightward. Ooh, not too far. Be something like that and then these other ones will follow suit so you don't really have to worry about these if you want to make them more extreme you can and we also have the blend shapes here uh, if your character has facial blend shapes those will appear right here and you can modify those respective values as well so we'll just close that down right now so our character is pretty much good to go uh, we have mapped his body we have mapped his uh, eye and, and uh, jaw bones now if you are exporting to iclone 5 because we're currently using 3d exchange 5 You'll want to go to apply to iClone and that'll apply your character to iClone. In this case, we're exporting to iClone 6. So I'm going to go over to export in iClone, control E, and the target version is iClone 6. We can call this guy, uh, you know, something like Super Sniper. And our max texture size uh, doesn't really matter. In this case, I think it, uh, 1024 is normally good. And we're going to uh, save him to our default iClone custom avatar folder. And I'll show you where that is later. And if you have animations, you'll want to select a bunch of stuff for animations here. But that's a whole nother can of worms. We'll cover that in a separate tutorial. So let's press OK now, and our character will import to iClone. So let's go back to our uh, iClone project right here. And let's switch to our uh, preview camera. 
And if I go over to my uh, character tab, our avatar uh, actor tab rather, and we go into our custom folder right here, we have Super Sniper. So let's click and drag this guy into our scene. There he is. So he looks just like his brother over here. Let's rotate him uh, 270 on the Z axis. So he's kind of facing us here. All right, so there's our character. We can test out a couple of his motions. So let's go to our uh, motion tab right here and we'll use the motion puppet tool. Uh, this is often a good uh, choice to test out character motions. So we can test out, you know, the drunken idol right here. He's just getting drunk while his buddy's off to war. Uh, we can do something like the uh, boxing motion right here. And they all look pretty good. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, exit out of this. What we can do is we can test out a uh, character motion on this um, character. And like I said, uh, non-standard characters are able to use all of iClone's motion tools. Um, they don't necessarily have facial animation. But basically, non-standard means that it's just not an iClone default uh, character rig, like uh, Gwyn or, or Heidi or Mason or Chuck. And on that note, let's try and give this guy one of those uh, personas. So we're going to go to our Motion tab here into Persona. And I'm going to just give him maybe uh, Heidi's persona just for fun. So let's go ahead and see if he can do any of Heidi's motions. So I right-click this guy. I'm going to go Perform. And let's give him a manly motion like a uh, catwalk. So this guy is off to war, and this guy is off to the fashion show. Just doing his catwalk right there. And everything looks fine for the motions. Fine and dandy. All right, so that's about it for uh, for the body motions. Let's test out the uh, limited facial animation, uh, like I mentioned before. So I'll zoom in on this character's face really quick. And zoom in a little bit closer so we can see his eyes. There we go. And let's test out the face puppet right here. So uh, we can just use one of uh, Mason's default motions. And you can see the character's eyes will move uh, very slightly. Uh, if we you know clear all these and just select his eyes by themselves, we can move those individually like that and you can see the waiting is a little bit strange so maybe his uh, hoodie is moving a little bit with his eyes uh, but uh, that might happen with your character depending on the uh, waiting and of the bones and everything um, but we also have the eyes and the chin or the jaw like I mentioned so you can be like oh my goodness what happened that's about his only expression in this case but you're uh, you may have characters with uh, more facial bones and you could do much more detailed facial animation as a result of that as well. And then if you want to save this guy, we'll just close this down. Again, you can save him just like the normal way you would with an avatar. Go to your custom tab. Oh, we're in the motion uh, tab there. Whoops. Go to actor, go to custom, and you can save this as uh, whatever you like. You can save him as, uh, you know, um, silly sniper. There we go. And you'll notice when you save it in iClone, it'll have a little bit of a different thumbnail as opposed to the 3D exchange ones, you can do that. And you can also do all sorts of material modifications and everything like you would with a normal character and icon as well. So that's about it for this tutorial. Um, we covered importing a character into 3D exchange, making a couple uh, or a simple mo material modification, mapping the body bones and the facial bones and testing those out, and then uh, applying some animations to the body and the face in iClone. So that's about it, guys. Again, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for our other tutorials on importing via 3D Exchange.